Hello YouTube and hello Ninth Age community. This is Charles with Evershade Gaming and we're going to look at the end of year balance patch update and I also just want to say welcome to the world of Ninth Age because this balance patch does something really cool that we've never seen before and it has included fluff snippets in all of our slim books. So let's jump right in. We're going to look at the Ogre Khan's book. We're going to look at the Empire Sun style book and we're going to look at the Arcane Compendium. Speaking of the Emperor Stansel, here they are. And the cool thing about these fluff snippets is first thing we get to see is this great map that shows the location of where the Empire Stansel are looking. They're looking the continent of Vetia. You can see their main spheres of influences. You can see the places where they built up some colonies or where they might interact with some other uh, forces, I believe. The southern part of the continent. Uh, where they have that other kind of big shade of red is actually just another like country that the Empire Sunstall is deeply allied with. There's uh, some little fluff snippets at the beginning that talks about who Suna is, it talks about the use of magic, it talks about the use of technology, and then we continue going on and we get into the normal rules that we've always seen with our snuff snippets. Uh, but now we have these great little shaded pieces where it says most drills are anchored around large regiments of Sansal's heavily armored foot soldiers. Smaller detachments commonly equipped with ranged weapons are trained in a variety of tactics to support the frontline formations, each component working together to create an effect greater than some other parts. Great description. We got things for the hereditary spell. We've got little fluffets for, for the characters. Imperial marshers are professional soldiers schooled in the art of war. Some are talented nobles born to lead, others are grizzled veterans from the ranks, but all are gifted in strategy and tactics. They know their qualifications are an unshakable loyalty to Suna and the Emperor, and the ability to inculcate devotion in their troops. So we got, you know, every, every, every uh, entry now has a little thing. For our Inquisitor, we hear that answering to the Supreme Prelate herself, Inquisitors are charged with rooting out insidious elements within the Imperial Society. Cultists, vampiric thralls, and those who simply ask too many questions are all prey to these steely-eyed killers. Dressed in simple, well-worn black clothing, recognize of any Sunstaller, and battle their fear for their expertise in the arts of death dealing. Excellent. You love it. I'm the only one. I, one I'm really curious about is for the dragon. Oh, and a couple things have gotten name changes. So the Imperial Dragon is now a commanding dragon. Same rules as was before. Undisputed King of Beasts, dragons are seldom willing to accept a rider. In Sansal, that opportunity is truly rare, and those who succeed in gaining such a creature's regard soon find themselves in great favor at the Imperial Throne, if they weren't already. Orders punctuated with a roar of dragon can change the course of a battle. Uh, so that kind of talks about its meeting of the minds rule. Excellent. Okay. So I'm not going to go through every fluff snippet. I want you to all be able to discover that on your own too. Um, but really lovely. I, th I think it kind of changes the whole flow of the book. The supplements first started, started coming out. People loved snippets in those. And it's, it's really exciting to see that across every Ninth Age Slim book now. So, getting to the points of day, I think you may have seen some in a couple places, but, you know, Commanding Dragon is now the new name of the dragon. Black Steel is down, that was a big one, and the Death Warrant is not up, so that combo is now available again for BSBs. You know, community's been kind of hoping for that for a long time, and it is a thing now. Shield of Volan down, Household Standards up. Corsair's down, Mantle of Ular is down, really some really cheap, cheap items for some characters. The Artificer went down 10, the Inquisitor went down 5, the Knight Commander went up a bit, but his shield is free. And then his Griffin went down 10, the Imperial Prince went down 10, and the Dragon went down 10. You know, that's that's right up my alley, I love running my Imperial Prince on a Dragon. Electoral Cav went down, and so did their shield, uh, and their Unit base cost went down for nightly orders, and then the lance went up and the model went up. So not too terrible, makes running smaller units easier. Light infantry went down, and so did their additional model cost, but the crossbow went up one point. Riders went down, their additional models went down, their pistols are now not free, and their brace of pistols went up. So they pretty much shifted all the points in the unit 
up a little bit so that the base cost could be really cheap. So they could actually be a very cheap chaff unit now. And then other than that, the flagellants went down 15, which is incredible. They were already so cheap. Uh, but now 15 of those guys for 170 points, uh, that's quite a bargain. So Empire Sunstall, great changes. Um, I think anyone who's playing Empire Sunstall right now will be very happy with these. Opens up some things. Um, I know one thing I'm excited about is you can actually fit two artificers with like their with some kind of gun or, or long rifle, and you can fit two volley guns, and you can fit two Imperial Rocketeers, which is actually pretty awesome. That's a serious amount of artillery for any Sun Staller unit. And the Riders, I think, are really in the same spot that they were. I think the Repeater Gun actually gets like a point cheaper, which is nice. Um, it didn't go up three, where everything else went up three, so that's actually, the Repeater Guns, I think, are, are might be a little bit cheaper now, which is kind of exciting, too. So, great changes for Empire Sunstone. Let's look at our Ogre Guns. Our Ogre Guns are primarily in the eastern part of the world for the Ninth Age, and they have some sort of meandering they do along those trails that cut through the lands of the Infernal Dwarves. Uh, but other than that, they're mainly concentrated there. As you can see, they, they kind of uh, are still known as mercenaries, and they go and seek their fame and fortune and feasts. Uh, some great little introductions about how they hunt and how they're nomads, and how they're mercenaries. A little, little snippet about the scraplings. Can't forget our dear scraplings. Our first little fluff snippet is for the Sons of Avalanche rule. Ogres are so large and heavy that when they build up speed, they can develop as much raw momentum as a cavalry charge. Able to smash apart enemy formations with the sheer weight of their impact, there's little such a bulky species has to fear from other creatures, even those that appear dreadful to humans. Makes me kind of wish that cavalry also had impact hits, but that's a cool description for the, the, sons, of the uh, sons of the Avalanche. For our great con, his fluff snippet is his or hers. Ogre step nomads have highly developed respect for history and lineage. Largely inspired by the unbeatable armies of the ancient Kunget Khan, certain tribal leaders seek to reclaim his position as Kanget, a Khan of Khans, Lord of the Steppe and the Kenget. Those who harbor such ambition tend to be truly impressive in body, spirit, and symbolic ordinations. Or, or sorry, ordinance. Our shamans are intentionally savage in appearance. Shamans are vital a uh, vital source of arbitration and spiritual guidance. But their ill will is also feared. Exorcisms, talking with spirits, reading our argries are common umist customs, and some revere the fire god Galzon. Trained by their predecessors, shamans earn powerful spells for both religious rites and for battle. All right. So again, everything's got a little fluff snippet. Our scraplings fluff snippet is these small creatures may not look much like a threat. But not, they not only rely on their ogre patrons for their livelihoods, they also fear their wrath that they disobey. This makes them eager to support their masters in battle, creating distractions to their enemy, or peppering them with small weapons from a distance. And one thing I noticed uh, looking at the points is that uh, a shield or a spear or throwing, throwing weapons are always free, but now uh, spears and shields are also a free choice, which is actually kind of exciting on scraplings, considering that used to be a point... Um, so those email, a little, you know, scraplings or shields could be really, really nifty, um, just to be little scoring roadblocks, um, to hold up your enemy to get your ogres in next. Oh, our yetis. We've got to look at our yetis. A strange species of remote mountain dollars that normally keeps itself hidden. Yetis can be coaxed down to fight in exchange for supplies. As large ogres, they're adapted to their frozen mountaintops with long hair covering the bodies and the ability to absorb heat directly from other beings. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, looking at the price changes, I think the ogres are also in a very solid place. Actually, quite a few, if you can kind of see. A lot of them are about the mercenary veterans, but the slave giant is now called a mercenary giant. Troll leader went down 10. Gut roar went down. Cult leader went up. Horde master went down. So did the heart ripper, blood letter, carcanized resilience... The Pen of the Grace Grass Sky went up five. That's not that big of a deal. So did Ligers, also not that bad. Arx went down five. Great Khan's paired weapons went up five. I thought that was curious. Um, 
I was, I'm kind of curious who's who's running that many paired weapons, but that's not really that big of a deal. I, I think paired weapons are a decent upgrade on your great con. His Iron Fist went down. Um, same thing with Khan's paired weapons went up. The Mammoth Hunter Grey weapon went down. The Mammoth Hunter Iron Fist went down. The Vanguard went down. His Rocker Rock went down. I love that. I love that Rocker Rock BSB. I think he's really slick. Bruiser additional models went down one. Again, those Scrappling Shield and Spears went down. Tribes went up, but their additional models went down. Frost Mammoth went down. Their crossbow went up, though. The Rock Rock base cost went down 20 points. And then Bombardiers went down 10 points. Scrapple went down 10. And a Thunder Cannon went down 10, too. Can Eater down a bit. And then the Mercenary Veterans had all sorts of ups and downs in various places. Their pistols are more expensive, but accurate's cheaper. Their magic resistance went up, their plate armor went up, but then their vanguard went down. Um, I think the other big change is that the Sabertooth Tiger is now a single model of 100 points, which is getting kind of pricey. Definitely makes the Scrappling is a little bit more... The Scrappling Trapper is probably the better shaft in the book, I would think. But their additional models went down 5, so I think the bigger units are just ever so slightly cheaper. Um, and the Tusker additional models went up and yetis went down a little bit so all across the board i think some decent little cuts and places here and there and should make for some very competitive ogre armies going forward and i was kind of excited to see that the the two big monsters went down the rock rock at 450 uh i mean i thought he was fine at 470 but 20 points cheaper is is great yeah so let's just take a quick peek at the arcane compendium as I write this or, or record this video, and this you know this these come out on November sixteenth, there are no changes to the Arcane Compendium, which I thought was a little strange. But I'm going with what I've been told. Um, the main changes is again we have some great little fluff pieces. So we have a description for alchemy as the path of transmutation, that it focuses on chemical re reactions and the transformation of materials. And every little path, I think cosmology is not complete in its fluff from what somebody uh, said on the forums. But other than that, all the other ones have these nice fluff pieces at the beginning. I don't think there's too many other little changes to it because even, even kind of all the equipment doesn't really get any sort of description or anything like that. They're all just same price as they were. So I'm not sure if that's something that's still going to be looked at at the end of the year or where this is where we stand for the rest of this year and the rest of next year. Usually the Arcane Companion has some changes, um, so I don't know, we'll see. Might be something to keep your eye on. I know the Arcane Companion is, is usually a pretty interesting uh, book to see what the changes are, so we'll just have to kind of keep our eyes on it. But these are currently all of our changes that uh, we're looking at. I just covered the Empire Sunstall and the Ogres in this video, but everything has been updated and everything comes out November 16th. This video is going to come out November 14th with a little uh, sort of preview spoiler. Uh, these are all the content creators that are working on videos for the various armies. Um, you might know them by their forum tags, but also, you know, Swamp Swinger and uh, Spacian. It's Glory Gold State Gaming. Super Orco is the same name on youtube math cd is watch these dice um so uh, definitely check out their the different channels and the different podcasts i'll be putting links down in the description of the video to the different content creators so if there's another army that you want to check out um definitely look for them i know proxy table gaming is going to be covering a, a decent bit of the the collection of armies too as well and then you know there's going to be reviews in french and spanish and english so please check them out, support our fellow Ninth Age content creators, and thank you for watching this video or listening to it, and catch you soon with more Ninth Age content, and this has been Evershade Gaming, have a good one.